Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Mike and welcome to Harvest Friday. Well, it's the week before Christmas, so I thought it'd be appropriate for us to just take some time and read the Christmas story together. So I'm just going to read the section in Luke, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through, um, 1 through 19. And if you want to grab your Bibles or grab your phone and read along with me, uh, that would be great. So Luke chapter 2, verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels left, or excuse me, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. So I love reading the story. I love Christmas. I love the time of year it is. I love everything it represents. I love the joy. I love the lights. I love the giving, the songs, the Christmas carols. I love this time of year. But what I love most about this time of year is just this story. The story of Jesus being God and coming to earth to save man. I, I, I am so thankful for this story. You know, uh, one, of the, one of the things I love around Christmas time is the giving of gifts. Yeah, I like to receive gifts, but I like more to give gifts. I love giving. I love seeing the joy on other people's faces when they get gifts. And, you know, it's, it's the heart of God. God so loved that he gave. So I just wanted to share with you one story from my childhood that really impacted me and helps me enjoy this time of year even more. So when I was, a, I was probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight years old, uh, my, my brother, my, I have two older brothers, and they had uh, bikes that were, mong they were called mongoose bikes. They were really cool dirt bikes, um, like the kind you pedal, not motor, no motorized bikes, but the kind you pedal. And my bike was the old bike with the banana seats, and, you know, and I just did not feel cool uh, riding around. Uh, with my friends or their friends uh, with my banana seat bike and their cool mongoose bikes. So I really wanted a mongoose bike. There was just one problem. The mongoose bikes were pretty expensive and I knew my parents didn't have any money. I knew we were struggling, so I just knew there's no way I could get this bike. And so I remember going to bed on Christmas Eve and I remember crying myself to sleep because I knew there was no way I could get this bike. My parents had left to go visit some friends. Um, they told, you know, my brothers, make sure I get to bed. I went to bed, you know, and I went to bed really sad and I, and I cried myself to sleep. 
And, you know, I woke up the next morning and we had our gifts and, and everything was, was great. I was thankful for what we had, but I was really sad that I didn't get, you know, a mongoose bike. But I understood we didn't have money. Uh, and then when we were done with opening all the presents, it was almost like that scene in the Christmas story where the dad was like, hey, what's that over there? You know, my, my, my dad kind of said, hey, what's over there? And I went and I went around um, to this other part, this other room by our house, and, and, you know, um, adjacent to our living room. And there was this bright, shiny, yellow mongoose bike. And I was so excited. I was so thankful um, that I now had a cool bike like my brother's. And I know my parents sacrificed to get me that bike because we didn't have money. And those bikes were pretty expensive, especially that time in, in those times back then. So I, I, was, I just remember that moment and I remember that feeling of I am loved, that my parents want to sacrifice me, my parents want to give to me their very best. And it's, it's such a great example for me to always remember how Christ feels about me, how God feels about me. That if my parents, who are, who are people, who are human, wanted to bless me and sacrifice for me, how much more does our Heavenly Father want to do the same? So when we get in around Christmas time, I think about that. I think about this idea of giving, and I love giving to my kids. I love seeing the joy on their faces. They're getting older now, but uh, it's still my heart to give to them and just you know bless them uh, for just being amazing kids. So uh, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to I encourage you enjoy this next week. Enjoy time with family. Enjoy time with friends. We are in a unique season. It may not be Christmas as usual. You know, our church has always had a Christmas Eve service, and this year we're doing our Christmas Eve service online. It's a little different. And so I, there, there might be some, you know, you're used to getting with certain friends or certain family, and, and you may not be able to do that this year. But let's not be sad about what we're missing. Let's enjoy what we have. Let's enjoy those that we get to be with. And let's make this a great Christmas time. And I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and so excited for the new year of what God's going to do. But before we go there, let's enjoy the here and now. Let's enjoy Jesus. Let's enjoy that He is the true reason for this season. And let's give gifts to others. Let's give ourselves to others. Let's be a blessing to others in this season. Merry Christmas and have a blessed day.